Discovering your true identity in Christ. Our identity in Christ could go down as the most important topic that we can deal with after the new birth because it determines our spiritual mindset and therefore our spiritual life and growth going forward. For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is, Proverbs 23, 7. Before the new birth, we were spiritually dead, morally bankrupt, and legally guilty. When Jesus tells us in John 3, 3 that we must be born again, he is telling us that our present condition is hopelessly unresponsive, corrupt, and guilty. Therefore, if we are going to be born again, it will rely decisively and ultimately on God. His decision to make us alive will not be a response to what we as spiritual corpses do, but what we do will be a response to His making us alive. The new birth is not getting a new religion, but getting a new life, and our identity is all centered around that new life. What matters is not merely affirming the supernatural in Jesus, but experiencing the supernatural in yourself. Galatians 2.2 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Here we learn that our old identity has been co-crucified with Christ, so that our new identity can be co-resurrected in Christ. It is not enough to say that Christ is in me. That would make us a landlord, and Christ the tenant, and we may be tempted to demand that Christ live by our house rules. But when we say that we are in Christ, then we are now living in His house, and by His rules. Our identity is predicated on how we understand our new spiritual life. Here is a list of revelations of who we really are in Christ. For example, 1. We are not sinners trying to be saints or sinners trying to be holy. The sin nature has been abolished. God has justified us through the righteousness of Jesus, and He chooses not to remember our sins any longer. God does not see us as sinners, so why do we see ourselves that way? We no longer have a sin problem, we have a mind programming problem, and this is why we have distorted identities. Our old mindset or old thinking needs to get renewed or replaced with the mind of Christ. The following verse confirms our new spiritual identity and status, Romans 6, 10-11. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 2. We are a new man, a new creation. We have a new nature, a new spirit, and a new life. God is not trying to fix us or improve us. He has exchanged his life for ours, and we merely have to recognize it and begin to walk in it. We already possess it. The question is, does it possess you? 3. We are called to be at rest, not at work. The only way we come to Christ is by grace and faith, not of works lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2.8 If we didn't have to work to get into the kingdom, what makes you think we have to work to live in it? The kingdom of God operates on rest, not works. It's not rooted in our performance, but on our faith in the finished works of the cross. Striving connects us to the carnal earthly kingdom, and rest connects us to God's kingdom. John 6, 28, 35 makes it clear. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. The gospel has brought a new identity in Christ that then allows our work to no longer be the source of our identity but the rightful expression of it. 4. It's not about us. It's all about Him. Who is the star of your movie, you or Jesus? If it's about you, then it is not about Him. How do you know if you're still living for yourself? If you are still worried, fearful, anxious, taking offense, or angry, then you are operating in your strength and your abilities and not living and resting in Him. 5. It's not about your principles. It's about the Prince. Our faith is in a person, not a doctrine. We are so focused on the principles and doctrines that we forget about the relationship. We tend to practice the principles in order to change our behavior. God is not trying to change your behavior. He is trying to focus on your belief in Him. Identity is not what you do. It is who you are. The more you reaffirm who you are in Christ, the more your behavior will begin to reflect your true identity. The closer we draw to Christ, 
the more we will become like him. Our identity is rooted in a person, not in a doctrine. 6. We must walk in his righteousness, not ours. The best way to grow in righteousness is by first understanding that we are already righteous. All the spiritual weapons we use are all designed to protect us from outside forces. This is because there is no evil in our new identity. We have been taught that every day we have to pick up our cross and crucify the old man along with the sin nature. Many of the sin issues that believers have are because they don't know that they're dead. We have already been crucified in Christ. Therefore, we are now alive in Him. Sanctification is not a process but an event. Have you ever seen a dead man get out of a coffin and rob a bank? He can't because he's dead. If we are in Christ, then we are sanctified and free to walk in His reality. If we are not walking in it, it's because our mind has not been renewed to who we really are in Christ. But as believers, we're not on a journey to the cross, we're on a journey from the cross. We're not on a journey towards righteousness. We're on a journey from righteousness. When we are in Christ, His identity becomes our identity. His works become our works. His power becomes our power and we become like Him because we are in Him. It's when we step into our performance and works-based mentality that we fall short. We need to learn that we walk only by faith in God and His promises. When you walk by an apple tree, you don't see the tree striving to produce apples. It produces apples naturally. The same with Christ. He is the vine and we are the branches and our job is to abide or rest in Him so He can produce fruit through us. The branch gets all life from the vine and it doesn't have to work at it. It just must learn to abide. Remember, there is no defeat in Christ. There is no confusion in Christ. There is no lack in Christ. There is no fear in Christ. There is no depression in Christ. There is no darkness in Christ. Romans 5.17 says, For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Here are a few famous quotes. If our identity is in our work rather than Christ, success will go to our heads and failure will go to our hearts, Tim Keller. Your identity is firmly anchored in Christ's accomplishment, not yours. His strength, not yours. His performance, not yours. His victory, not yours, Tully and Chivijian. My identity and my security are not in my spiritual progress. My identity and my security are in God's acceptance of me, given as a gift in Christ. J.D. Greer Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Feel free to go to our website and check out our video library and numerous other resources.